colour in fashion is a lot like sizing. You can spend all the money in the world on the nicest and most expensive pieces, but if you get it wrong, it could ruin an entire outfit. If you've clicked on this video, you're probably wondering how to incorporate colours into your outfits without accidentally looking like a clown. So that's exactly what I'm going to talk you through today and hopefully it'll give you some ideas that will help you enhance your personal style. Now do remember that these are just guidelines and not rules by any means. At the end of the day, you should always just wear what you like and what you feel comfortable in. To build a colourful and cohesive looking outfit, you need to follow a colour scheme using the colour wheel. The colour wheel is made up of 12 colours. The three primary colours, red, yellow and blue, these colours cannot be created by mixing other colours together. The three secondary colours, purple, orange and green, these are made by mixing the primary colours in various combinations. And the six tertiary colours, red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet and red violet. These are made by mixing a primary and secondary colour together. Now colour schemes are logical combinations of colours that look appealing together. They're sometimes referred to as a colour harmony. There are many colour schemes and theories out there, but the basics you need to know for fashion are the following. The first is the analogous colour scheme. These are colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. For example, in this fit, I have my blue Acne Studios jeans paired with my blue-green Uniqlo t-shirt. Since these colours are next to each other in the colour wheel, the outfit works. The second colour scheme is a complementary colour scheme. This is colours that are opposite each other in the colour wheel. For example, in this fit, I've got some green chinos from ASOS and I've paired them with a red sweater from H&M. This outfit is a little bit more striking to look at, but because the colours are opposite each other in the colour wheel, everything still looks good together. The third is the triadic colour scheme. This is colours that are evenly spaced apart in the colour wheel. For example, in this fit, I've got my blue Acne Studios jeans again, and then on top, I've got the green Cos Mock Neck tee, and on top of that, this sort of brown, orange, Uniqlo lambswool cardigan. This colour scheme is definitely more of a statement, but because the colours are evenly spaced apart in the colour wheel, the whole outfit harmonises together and still looks good. Now if colour blocking isn't your thing, then neutrals are going to be your best friend. Neutrals are your whites, blacks, greys and beiges, and they go with absolutely everything. You could pair a neutral with just one colour, or you could take any of the colour schemes we just discussed and add neutrals into the outfit to break it up a bit. For example, those green chinos I had with the red sweater might look a little bit too festive for you, in this case, you could add a neutral jacket on top and it completely changes the look of the whole outfit. So what if you followed all of the advice so far, but you're finding that colours still don't look good on you? Well, in this case, you might be choosing colours that don't complement your undertone. The easiest way to find your undertone is to look at the colour of your veins on your wrist. If they look more green, then you have a warm undertone. In this case, try sticking to colours that are on the warmer side of the colour wheel, such as reds, oranges and yellows. If your veins look more blue, then you've got a cooler undertone. In this case, you've guessed it, try sticking to colours that are on the cooler side of the colour wheel, such as blues, greens and purples. If you can't really tell if your veins are blue or green, then you're probably neutral, in which case you can get away with wearing pretty much any colour. By the way, this applies to jewellery as well. Gold tends to complement warmer undertones, whereas silver complements cooler undertones. Now what if you found your undertone, but you still want to wear colours that in theory don't match it? Well this is fine as well because each colour actually has its own temperature spectrum from warmer to cooler. So you could go for warmer or cooler variations of the colour you prefer and they will still complement your undertone. For example, we can look at the spectrum of green colour and it goes from cool to warm. If you were creating these colours using paint, the temperature would get warmer or cooler based on the amount of yellow or blue you add to the mix. So even if green doesn't theoretically match your undertone, you could still wear it by going with a temperature that complements you. 
The final thing you might want to consider when incorporating colour into your outfits is the saturation. Keeping colours a little bit less saturated, or at least at the same saturation level throughout, will make your outfit look way more cohesive and put together. Saturation refers to the intensity of the colour, so something that is really saturated will stand out a lot. You can see this for yourself by editing a photo on your phone and turning the saturation level all the way up. It's a lot of information, but as I said at the beginning, there's no right or wrong with this. These are just guidelines if you don't know where to start. You can probably tell from the outfits I was showing, I wasn't following the colour schemes exactly to a T, but at least aiming for somewhere in that general area will give you a really good starting point to start incorporating colour into your outfits. Anyway, I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!